Hello, everyone. This is Deacon Steve Greco, and we're back on Empowered by the Spirit. I'm with Marianne Greco, my lovely bride of 42 years. Welcome, Marianne. Thank you, Steve. It's good to be here. This is a very important subject. Uh, certainly every week is, but this week, so many of you need to listen and need to let God's healing flow through you. We're focusing on healing of relationships. And this healing of relationships is healing of marriages, healing of families, children, even grandchildren, perhaps brothers, sisters, anyone where you're really close to them. And Marianne, as we travel all over the state and all over the country, um, so many people come up to us with issues re re regarding marriages or children that they're not talking to, and this is a really important subject. It is. Just about everyone we meet at some point in their life has had a broken relationship, and there's a lot of pain associated with that, and yet Jesus has given us the Holy Spirit to help us and to get past those broken relationships, so hopefully today we can inspire our listeners to use the Holy Spirit and to start healing some of those relationships in their lives that are painful. Amen, amen. Jesus would often say amen, amen before he would talk about something extremely important. So in the spirit of Jesus, I'm going to say amen, amen. No matter what your circumstance is with your family, with your marriage, God is greater than your problems. Jesus loves your marriage, loves your family more than you can ever imagine. He wants to heal your marriage and heal your family. He wants to make it whole. But in order to let the Lord heal your family and heal your marriage and heal your relationships, you have to trust him and surrender to him. And then you will have peace. John 16, 33. I've told you this so that you might have peace in me. In the world, you'll have trouble. But take courage. I have conquered the world. So many times, Marianne, we don't feel at peace because we feel like the burdens of the world are upon us. But we have to release our marriage, our family, our children, our grandchildren, whatever it might be, to the Lord. Yes, sometimes I think when we're hurting and in pain, we feel like the whole world is going on without us and we're sitting there just concentrating on our pain and our sorrow and, and not on God. And the passage that sticks in my mind is nothing is impossible with God. Sometimes we feel like it's impossible for this relationship to be healed. But we need to surrender to God and realize that God is the creator of the universe. He can do anything. Nothing is impossible for him. And we need to believe that. Well, that's exactly right. And, you know, Hebrews eleven six, Marianne says, without faith it's impossible. Please him. For anyone who approaches God must believe that he exists and that he will reward those who seek him. It's so important that we understand that Jesus loves our family more than we do and that we have to have faith in that. That, as it says in Romans 8, 28, that all things work for good for he who loves the Lord and is called according to his purpose. All those things mean that your family issues will come together and God will use the brokenness to be able to bless your family. But it's in his time and not in our time. I had, that calls to mind, I had an experience when the children were younger. Uh, we had a, a series of accidents, I'll say, when my younger uh, child kept running into things and getting stitches in his face and here and there. And our daughter had gone through a sliding glass door and had a lot of stitches. And one of the last times it happened, our, our youngest um, son had hit himself and was bleeding on his eyebrow. And I was just like, God, why are you allowing this to happen? I, I've tried to protect my children as much as I can. And it was like him saying to me, yes, you've tried, but you have to give them to me. They're my children, and I love them more than you even love them. So release your children to me, and I will protect them. And at that moment, I did it. 
I do take it back sometimes, but I have to remind myself to continually give the, the children and all my family members to the Lord. At that time, I released them to the Lord, and things started getting better, less accidents. I think I learned my lesson that I have to continually give those problems and those relationships to the Lord because He loves my children, my family, far more than I can even think about. This is so powerful, Marianne. It's so powerful for our listeners to really listen in. And, you know, the Lord just told me as you were speaking that we really need to have a prayer inviting him into our hearts in order to trust in him, in order for us to truly surrender our children to him, our family, our marriages. So, Marianne, I'm going to ask that you just repeat after me as you're standing in for those that are listening in. And those that are listening, please repeat these words out loud because there's something that is so powerful about that spoken word. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I release my marriage to you. I release my marriage to you. I release my children to you. I release my children to you. I released my grandchildren to you. I release my grandchildren to you. I release all my loved ones to you. I release all my loved ones to you. I trust in you. I trust in you. I believe in you. I believe in you. That you love them. That you love them. More than I love them. More than I love them. That you will take care of them. That you will take care of them. You will bless them. You will bless them. You will heal them. You will heal them. You will meet their needs. You will meet their needs. According to your riches and glory. According to your riches and glory. I love you. I love you. Thank you for this faith. Thank Thank you for this faith. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the intercession of the Blessed Mother. Thank you for the intercession of the Blessed Mother. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' In name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So you prayed that prayer. It's a really important prayer because you're releasing your family. You're consecrating your family to the Lord. That consecration becomes so important. Now, how can you get relationship healing, family healing, marital healing? Seven steps to do that. First step, surrender your life to Jesus. Now, you can't surrender... Anyone else's life to Jesus? So many of us want to surrender our spouse's life, our children's life, grandchildren, brother, sister, whatever, but you can't surrender anybody but yourself. I tried that and it didn't work. You just can't do it. But what you can do is you can do your part, which basically says, Lord, I give you my life. So we're going to have another prayer, Marianne, okay. because we surrendered our family, and now we're going to surrender our own hearts. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I release my heart to you. I release my heart to you. I release my soul to you. I release my soul to you. I release my mind to you. I release my mind to you. I surrender. I surrender. Totally. Totally. Completely. Completely. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Of my will. Of my will. To your will. To your will. Take over my life. Take over my life. I praise you. I praise you. For healing me. For healing me. For saving me. For saving me. For giving me the gift of wisdom. For giving me the gift of wisdom. The gift of healing. The gift of healing. The gift of miracles. The gift of miracles. I love you. I love you. Use me. Use me. In any way you want. In any way you want. Now and forever. Now and forever. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. Through the intercession of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Through the intercession of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Through the intercession of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Through the intercession of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. In Jesus' name. 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 Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now think about what's going on here. You just surrendered yourself to the Lord completely. You've surrendered your family completely. You essentially said, I trust in you. You're in charge. I'm not. And in doing that, that's one of the most important steps of healing a family, healing a marriage. And, you know, it's, it's, 
easy to say the words. Sometimes it's harder to do, and sometimes we really we do it. But then when difficult times come, we start to try to fix things ourselves. And so we try to take back our family and stuff. So I think this prayer is something that we need to continually pray and continually give our self and our family to the Lord because we try to take it back. You know, we want to there was a we want to be in control of everything in our lives. We want to be fixing, we want to fix our spouses, fix our children. You know, there was an old show when some of us were growing up called Queen for a Day in which we were in charge of that particular day and everybody had to do what we wanted them to do. And that's how we live our life. We pray that way. We pray for God to fix this and fix that without realizing that we need to praise him and pray in thanksgiving and realize that God is in charge and, and that all things will work for good. He and has he, a better plan sometimes than what we can think of. And what is that saying? We plan and God laughs? Yeah. God's been laughing a lot lately for, uh, for many of us and many of our plans. But when we trust in him, when we let his plan unfold, when we don't see the plan right away, but realize by faith that God will make it good, that's when great change starts happening. So the second step after surrendering our hearts totally to the Lord, surrendering our family, is forgiveness. And we're going to focus on the second step in forgiveness in two ways. First, forgive, forgiving God. And second, is forgiving others. And first, in forgiving God, um, again, we want to be in charge. We want things to work the way that we want them to work. You look at Psalms. I know, Marianne, you just did an important study of Psalms. Psalm 13, 2 and 3. How long, Lord, will you utterly forget me? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I carry sorrow in my soul, grief in my heart, day after day? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Psalm 77, 4. When I think of the Lord, I groan. As I ponder, my spirit grows faint. This was David crying out from his soul that things weren't working out the way he wanted them to. Boy, I feel like I've had those words in my heart with God a lot of times. You know, things are difficult and not working in the family and you're praying, God, please fix this. I know you you can't be wanting this to happen. And and I, I get mad at God sometimes. A lot of people don't want to express that. But when things don't happen right away, we just... We blame God. In reality, a lot of times God has to let time pass and and things evolve, but we want it instantly. You know, <coughs> excuse me, if we're honest with ourselves, if we're truly honest, we'll realize how many times we're disappointed. And there are often that people will say things like, you know, i I've gone to Mass every day or I've gone to Mass frequently and I've prayed the rosary and I've, and I've been there for you, Lord, and I've, I've expounded, you know, your faith, your name, and so forth. And this is what you do to me. You know, it's St. Teresa saying that uh, I understand why um, you don't have very many friends because of, of, you know, what happens in our life to the Lord. I mean, the reality is, is that God's way is not our way. In Isaiah, it says, as high as the heaven is above the earth is my ways above your ways, and we have to trust in him. That was hard for me, one particular, well, a lot of occasions, but one occasion comes to mind when our lovely and fantastic daughter-in-law had multiple sclerosis diagnosed, and then she was pregnant with our first grandchild. And I remember driving to UCI Medical Center, crying out to God, why is this happening to this lovely person, this lovely couple, my, my son and his wife? Why is this happening? And, and I was angry. And I said, Lord, give it to me. Don't give it to them. And there are times that we just don't understand why misfortune happens, death in the family, uh, illness in the family, losing of jobs, financial problems, whatever they might be. But I remember in that drive, I felt God come to me saying, do you not understand that I love her more than you do? And do you not understand that I will make all things work for good? Yeah, and I think sometimes 
we realize we are looking at the small picture and God is looking at the big picture. It's like we're looking at the front of a tapestry. We want everything to be neat and clean and God is looking at the back. Or, I'm sorry, he's looking at the front and we're looking at the back with all the tangles of a tapestry and what it looks like to us is a mess. And he's saying, you know, it's all going to work out, but it takes more time or, or things are going to happen. But it's, these things are happening because what is the ultimate goal we want for our family? We want them to be in relationship with God and to be in the kingdom of heaven. And so we have to trust God that he has a better plan. You know, that's so true. And, you know, someone once said that with that tapestry, um, we'll be in heaven and we'll look at our beautiful life and realize that all things did work for good and we wouldn't change anything because if we changed anything, then certain blessings that we had wouldn't have happened. Right. Yeah. So forgiveness is forgiveness of God, but it's also forgiveness of others. You and I go around the country again praying for people in our healing ministry and this is spiritual hearts and ministry and again this radio show is brought to you by the sower ministry that we are partners with but in this forgiveness area you know just what happened uh frequently uh we see it all the time in our most recent prayer meeting that we were at we said before you come up and ask for prayer make sure that you have forgiven other people that you don't come up with lack of forgiveness in your heart and to see the look on certain people's faces that were new. You see, we justify lack of forgiveness and people have hurt us. They have abused us, maybe sexually, physically, mentally. They've abandoned us. They defrauded us. They did all these things in which we have all this justification. But the reality is that we are to forgive seven times 70, which is basically in scripture saying, Always. We are to forgive without strings. See if you know this verse. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Marianne, we can't even say the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father, without forgiving others. Yes, I, I had a friend that shared that. He says, I, I just can't forgive this person in my life. He said, they really heard and and uh, he went to a priest about it. And the priest said, well, then you better not be praying that our father prayer. And he looked at him and he said, what? And he said, because you're saying forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespassed against us. He says, you're, if you cannot forgive, don't expect God to forgive you. And I really kept that in my heart. We need to realize first, we have to forgive others. It doesn't matter whether they want to be forgiven or that they even feel sorry for what they did. But God wants us to forgive others so we can understand and receive his forgiveness. Scripture is pretty clear. As we judge others, so will we be judged. One of very important scripture for me is Matthew 5, 43 to 48. You have heard that it was said you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of our heavenly Father, for he makes his son rise on the bad and the good and causes rain to fall on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what recompense will you have? Do not tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brothers only, what is unusual about that? Do not the pagans do the same? So be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. That's so poignant, Marianne, because it's basically saying that Jesus loves and God loves those that sin, which we all are sinners, those that are good and those that are not so good. He loves us equally. He loves those people that really hurt us just as much as he loves me. And this is a concept when I talk about in Bible studies, it's really difficult for people to understand. How can I possibly forgive that person who really hurt me? They say, I just can't do it. And you know what? I God has given me those opportunities in my life to feel that way too. And my answer is to them, you can't do it by yourself. 
that's when we turn to God and ask him to help us forgive others. And he does. He wants that. So you can turn to God. It's not something you, you can do on your own. Well, you've heard it said, to err is human, to forgive is divine. And we do need that intercession from the Lord, the grace from the Lord to be able to forgive because we have been hurt. We've been abused. We've been abandoned. We've been hurt by our parents, perhaps, by our children, by our spouses who abandon us, by business partners. It's so important to understand that. So, Marianne, we're ready again. Since this has got to be involving God's grace, God's forgiveness, God's love, God's power to allow us to forgive as he has forgiven us, let us pray it again. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Give me your grace. Give me your grace. So that I may forgive. So that I may forgive. Those that have hurt me. Those that have hurt me. Those that have abandoned me. Those who have abandoned me. Those that have betrayed me. Those who have betrayed me. In my marriage. In my marriage. In my family. In my family. In my work environment. In my work environment. In my church. In my church. In any area of my life. In any area of my life. Thank you. Thank you. For allowing me. For allowing me. The grace. The grace. To forgive. To forgive. As you have forgiven me. As you have forgiven me. In Jesus' name. 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 In Jesus name. It's so, Amen. Amen. It's so important that we we pray for that forgiveness. We think that we can do it on our own, but the reality is we, we need God's help. We just can't do it our, ourselves. We, we no. hold on. And, and here's something for all you holy men and women listening in. This is very, very important for you to understand. If you start thinking and regurgitating back the reasons why you don't forgive someone, that's the enemy whispering in your ears. And often, because it's gone on for years and years and years, often what happens is that you have to remind yourself of why you're unforgiving. And when, and when you do that, that's again just letting you know that's not of the Lord. The Lord wants you to forgive. The Lord wants you to totally forgive. And we've prayed that prayer. So call that person up on the phone that you are to forgive. Call up that brother, that sister, that aunt, that uncle, that mother, that father. And if they've passed away, then have that heart to heart. Write a letter to them forgiving them, loving them, those in business. It's hard. I know it's hard, but God will give you the grace to do it. Well, sometimes I think, you know, we have to take control of our mind because like you said, Steve, a lot of times this... Uh, it, it'll come out of the blue. Something will happen and, and you'll start getting angry about this person that hurt you. And that's when we need to call in the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, help me to love this person as you love them and to forgive them. Rather than spending time on the wound and the hurt and the and that pain that you had, I, I challenge our listeners to go to the Lord immediately when that person comes to mind and when that pain comes to mind and ask God to heal it and ask him to help you forgive that person. And it's very powerful. to It turns your whole life around when you start doing that and you'll find all of a sudden... At first, it's hard to do because you're still angry at the person. But if you do it out of obedience, you'll find that soon you'll actually really be lovingly praying for that person and your heart will be changed. Well, that's such an important point, Marianne. One of the important prayers that you have to do is when someone bothers you, when you have a problem forgiving them, pray for the Lord to give you the eyes to see them in the way that Jesus sees them. And when you do that, you will see them completely differently. Yes, I've, I've had to do that at times. You know, and, and I asked, I realized that God loves that person. And the other thing that helps sometimes is um, 
This works really well in marriages too, is to ask God to see them as they were as a child. Sometimes we're so angry or we have wounds and hurts that we cannot even see that person with loving eyes. But if we ask God to help us see them as a child, somehow we can renew our love enough to pray for that child within that person and it really helps us. You know, we, we don't know what people have gone through how they've been hurt, how they've been abused, or how, how, you know, just what's happened in their life. And we often judge them. And Jesus, again, is clear in saying, do not judge them. Do not judge them, for I love them. They are my children. And there have been so many times when I've had situation in which, you know, I felt resentful towards someone. And God told me to pray for them, as you mentioned, Marianne. Mm -hmm. God told me to walk up to them and tell them that you're praying for them. Tell them that you care for them, that you love them. And I said, well, Lord, I don't love them. And the Lord said, I want you to see them as I see them. And when I started praying and asking the Lord to say, let me see them as you see them, it's amazing the amount of love that I got for them. It was like I couldn't believe it. And I started seeing them completely different. So those of you out there that are struggling with your spouse, with your husband, with your wife, ask the Lord for the grace to see them through his eyes, to love them with his love. Not as, not as they've hurt you, but to see them indeed as a child of God. And when we do that, Boy, that's when the healing really happens. That's when the transformation really happens. That's when the Lord steps into our family, our marriage, our job situation, relationship with a boss, uh, relationship with a coworker. There's so many things in which we hold resentments, we gossip, we do those things that are not of the Lord. And Jesus is calling us for that transformation, calling us to turn our hearts over to him. And when we forgive, it's absolutely amazing the graces that flow. We can block our our graces by lack of forgiveness. And the minute we are able to let go of those wounds, or not that we ever need to forget, because I think God, you know, we keep a memory so we can protect ourselves, but we will be able to look at that person without... Um, hurts anymore and we'll be able to actually even as you progress love that person yeah and 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 when we say don't forget obviously god will restore us to health though that we don't have to dwell on it no you know so that the memory might come to you but you're not wounded by it anymore Marianne, you had mentioned about blocking the blessings, and that reminds me of the famous umbrella story because this all fits together, that when we have lack of forgiveness, we are blocking the blessings. And what was that vision that you saw the umbrella? Well, God said to me, you know, I have so many blessings for you. He says that it's like rain coming down and you're standing under the umbrella trying to avoid getting wet. He says, put down your umbrella, get out in the rain and soak in my blessings. I have them. In fact, even turn your umbrella upside down. And that's exactly what we're called to do here on Empowered by the Spirit is to be blessed by the Lord, to be healed by the Lord, to be restored by the Lord. We certainly hope you're enjoying this show. The Sower Ministry and Spirit-Filled Hearts are doing a collaboration on this radio show. And we feel the Holy Spirit is working powerfully in healing you. But we'd love to hear from you. Contact us by email at empowered at spiritfilledhearts.org. That's empowered at spiritfilledhearts.org. We're going to take a short break. Ask your friends to listen in. We're going to talk more about family healing, relationship healing, and how God wants to destroy us to complete, completely restore us to complete health. God bless you. Hello, everyone. It's Deacon Steve Greco, and we're back on Empowered by the Spirit. We're talking about healing of relationships, healing of families, healing of marriages, healing of those relationships that really trouble you. We've talked about how much God loves your family and your marriage and your friends, how his love 
is so much greater than our love, and we have to trust that. We talked about surrendering our hearts to him that starts with that, and we prayed a prayer of surrender. We talked about the challenge of forgiveness, forgiving God for things not working out in the way that we'd like them to, forgiving others, and we prayed for the grace to be able to do that. And now we're into the third step of healing of relationships, and that is forgiveness of self. Yes, that is one challenge for many of us out there. You know, healing your family, your marriage, means forgiving yourself. We've heard the greatest commandment out of Matthew 22, 37, 39. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Well, the first part of that important commandment is loving God. And that's something that is easy for us to do as it relates to just letting go and letting God fill our hearts with his praise, with his love. Fill our hearts with joy. Fill our hearts as we praise him. But often, forgiving ourselves, Marianne, is more difficult because we think, at least I have, we think at times we should have done better, that we can forgive another person easier than I should have known better. And we, we have this shame that leads to addictions. We have this self-condemnation. But God told us in Romans 8, 1, there is no condemnation in those that love Jesus. No condemnation in those in Christ Jesus. And it's so important that we understand that if Jesus hasn't condemned us, we shouldn't be condemning ourselves. No, it's not of the Lord to condemn ourselves. Yes, we need to look at our our failures and and realize that we can turn them over to God and ask him to heal heal us. So often, I think when we don't forgive ourselves, we become paralyzed. You feel like you can't do anything else. You're just paralyzed and you keep replaying that little scenario, I should have done, or I, if I had been better. Um, that's when we have to stop and look at it and say, is this what God wants me to do? Is this what Jesus would ask? Everyone thinks they've created the greatest sin. Everyone thinks that what they've done is unforgivable. The reality is, is Jesus died on the cross for you. Where it says you should love your neighbor as yourself, how can we love our neighbor if we don't love ourselves? And if we don't love ourselves, the greatest sin is the sin of pride. That pride is not loving ourselves because God loves us unconditionally, completely, without reservation. And as it says in Marriage Encounter, God doesn't make junk. Are we greater than God, more knowledgeable than God? Why is it that we find it so difficult to forgive ourselves at times? It's the enemy that wants us to hate ourselves. If you feel or hear a little voice in your ear talking about that you're someone that is unforgivable, that's not of the Lord. The Lord always wants to restore us. Absolutely. Like, who are we to think that we can't forgive ourselves when God loves us so much? We have to learn to love ourselves. We have to, to say, it's okay, I made a mistake, but nothing too great that God can't fix. Sometimes I think there's a little pride in people to think, oh, I did such a grievous sin that God won't forgive me, and so I'm just going to beat myself up all the time. No, he died for us and for every sin. He's so much greater than that. We have to give him a chance and turn it over to the Lord. And there again, the mind comes into being. You know, Do we entertain that thought of how and not forgive ourselves? Or do we immediately, when we start putting ourselves down, we need to take it to God and ask him to heal that? We have to understand that it's the enemy who wants us to hate ourselves. It's the enemy condemning us. It's the enemy that wants to block blessings. And when we don't forgive ourselves, we block blessings. I remember a time in my life I was feeling very bad about myself. I didn't want to leave the house. 
You know, you form this depression. But that's the enemy. The enemy wants to, to defeat our ministry, defeat our purpose in life. But God is a God of restoration. So turn to him. If you feel badly about ourself, read Romans 8.1 that there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Read the fact that the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has freed us from sin and death, freed us in abundance. Read Ephesians 1, 3, and 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens as he chose in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blemish before him. How can we be holy and, and without blemish before him if we're condemning ourselves? Well, all we have to do is say yes to him and yes to his love and yes to his forgiveness and understand that God has made us whole by dying on the cross for us. It's not what we've done or haven't done. It's what God has done. You know, Steve, one of the things that really helps us, I think we both do this for each other, is if our listeners have a, a friend or a spouse that they can do this with, it really helps. And that's when we're starting to condemn ourselves and feel bad about ourselves. We use the phrase, I'm going to light it up, or I'm going to express it until, you know, I turn to Steve and I say, you know, I'm really feeling bad about myself over this. And what it does is it verbalizes it and makes it something... And we take away that negative power immediately. So sometimes it helps to go to someone else and speak of that. No, it's, it's very, very true. And, you know, let's take a look at more scripture. Isaiah 43, fear not for I've redeemed you. I've called you by, my, by name. You are mine. I've redeemed you. I've called you by name. Is that someone who should be hating themselves or feeling bad about themselves? Jesus has redeemed us. He's called us by name. When you pass through the water, I'll be with you. In the rivers, you shall not drown. When you walk through the fire, you'll not be burned. The flame shall not consume you. That's a God who loves us. And now one of the most important uh, verses for me out of Isaiah, Isaiah 43 again, because you are precious in my eyes and glorious because I love you. Jesus sees us as precious. He sees us as, as that unique snowflake. And that means those areas where we've fallen down. Those areas that we haven't done what we wanted to do, God has created that uniqueness, and he loves to restore us to complete health. We are that sheep that leads the flock that he goes after to restore us. And as it says in scripture, how much more rejoicing will be done for that one sheep, that one lamb that has left the flock, that comes back, that repents, that turns their life to Jesus. That's for you out there right now. Do not feel badly about yourself. Repent. God is there restoring you to health. God is there healing you. Do not worry about what you've done. That is in the past. You are precious in God's eyes. And in fact, it's that very weakness after we allow the Lord to heal it that he can use for us to take out and help others be healed. He, he will heal that weakness or that fault and we can go out and share and love others with knowing that and sharing with them that we were healed in that area and they too can be healed. It's very powerful to know that God can use those those things that we've gone through and and show them to others and and be able to be show them how much God loves us. Some of you out there have issues with addictions in the past that God has healed, alcoholism, drug addiction, pornography, sexual addictions. God can use you. God can use you as a vessel, as a healing vessel in which God has healed you and you can pray for others. You can relate to them that you, you know where they are. You've gone through, you've, you've, you've stepped in those moccasins. In fact, again, out of Isaiah 43, God talks about restoration. He, talks, he says, fear not for I'm with you. I will bring back your descendants. I will gather you up. He's saying that as, as I, have cre I have created you for my glory, whom I formed and made. See, we're created for God's glory. 
Further, it says, see, I'm doing something new. Now it springs forth, do you not perceive it? In the desert I make a way, in the wastelands rivers. The people whom I form for myself, that they may announce my praise. It is I who wipe out for my own sake your offenses, your sins I remember no more. For all those listening in, do not condemn yourself. I know some of you have had abortions. Some of you have had all kinds of sexual crimes or all kinds of crimes as it relates to crimes against society or against God or various sins in your life that you don't feel good about. Well, God is saying here that I wipe out for my own sake your offenses, your sins I remember no more. There's no reason to condemn yourself. So no matter what's happening in your family, no matter what you have done, God is greater than that. He can restore you to complete health, your family for complete health. It's so important. I know there was a time I felt so bad about myself. And, and I, I was there in at Anaheim Convention Center. And I just, I didn't feel like doing anything. And God was, was playing the music, uh, or the people were playing the music, and I felt it was from God. Saying, Yahweh, you know you are near. And in that music, all of a sudden, my life flashed before me, and I saw myself evangelizing, feeding the poor, doing all the things for the Lord that he had wanted me to in so many times in my life. And I felt God saying to me at that moment, this is how I see you. Not any sins that you've done. I see you as my servant. I see you as my son. And to all of those out there, he sees you as a daughter, as a son, as a child. Someone that he has created that you may announce his praise. That he has created to be holy, spotless, and blameless. And when we don't forgive ourselves, it affects our whole, all, every relationship we have. It really bleeds into our family life. It bleeds into our other relationships. So if we want to see healing in our entire family and our relationships, we have to start with asking God to heal us and to receive it and to forgive ourselves. Because it just affects, it affects the way we view life in general. So it's very important to forgive ourselves so we can move forward. To everyone out there, God has forgiven you. It is time to completely forgive yourself. It's time to give yourself a break. Because again, it's prideful not to do that. God can't use you in the way he wants to. You cannot fulfill your destiny, your promise, until you are forgiving yourself. Ask for the grace to do that. It doesn't matter what you've done. God is greater than any sin that you've ever done or ever could do. Point number four is seek ye first the kingdom of God and leave what we call your Isaac at the altar of God. Now this is really very critical in the healing of relationships. You may recall Abraham in Genesis 22 and at that particular time in verse 15 to 18, the Lord's messenger came to Abraham from heaven and said that, that the Lord is blessing him because if you remember, Abraham put his son, his only son at the time, Isaac, on the altar to be sacrificed. He gave up what was most important to him. And, and the angel of the Lord said, because of that, because of not withholding, your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies and in their descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessings. All this because you obeyed my command. When we put God first ahead of anything else, God pours out his blessings upon you. Matthew 6, 33, seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be given to you besides. I know for me, Marianne, what was really important is that I had this idyllic image of a family. We are all together, all getting along, all had a family dinner together. I wanted a perfect family, everyone caring about each other. How did that work for you, Steve? Yeah, exactly. How did that work for <laughs> us? Well, you know what? 
um, it happens in the way God wants it to happen. And, be, and, and, you know, Sundays can often be hard for me because I have to fight off that, well, where's the Sunday dinner? You know, where is everybody getting together? Well, the kids now live far apart. But the point is, is that when we have in our mind how the perfect family or perfect marriage or perfect situation is supposed to fit, we have these expectations, and expectations are really resentments that are soon to happen. They're really disappointments that are going to happen. We can't have expectations. All we can have is praising God and thanking Him for the blessings that we have. But we have to put Him first and not our image of what a marriage should look like, what a family should look look like, or compare our family to anybody else. Right, and I, I go back to your story of Abraham, and I think about it, he prayed forever to have a child, a, a son. He had no, which was really important in his society to have a son. And so finally in old age, God gives him a son, and then God asks him to sacrifice his son. And it's like, God, what is this about? You know, how that's totally against what he had worked his whole life for, prayed for his whole life. And I think so often we look at things and we work hard for things and we really try to make things happen. And all of a sudden there's this transition. We don't realize that that became more important in our life than God. We were so busy working for it. And God can't bless that. I mean, no. That's idol worship. I mean, even that, though it was a good thing in the beginning. Yeah, I mean, you can want health, you can want finances, you can want restoring of marriages, and and God wants that. God wants to bless you. God wants to bless your family. But when you make that more important than Him, then that becomes an idol. And right. even things that are good in your life, and that's so hard for people to understand. Sometimes it happens so gradually, we, we don't even realize that it's become our, our, the wanting of a perfect family has become more important than putting God first. It, it kind of creeps up on you if you don't watch it. The fifth step here in terms of restoration of family, of relationships, of marriage, is to let the Blessed Mother lead you in prayer and lead you to intercede and heal your family. You know, the whole area of the rosary becomes extremely important, and the Blessed Mother wants to heal your family. That was so important to me about 20 years ago, and there was a day that I absolutely remember because I was at my wit's end. I had three teenagers. Whatever I said was wrong. If I said white, they said purple. If I said red, they said green. And I went to... I went to uh, a church during the day. It wasn't a mass. It was just time for me to meditate. And I just said, Lord, I can't do it. Help me. Give me wisdom. And the Lord said, I want you to pray the rosary every day for your wife, for your family. A decade of the rosary. And I haven't missed in 20-some years. Because the Blessed Mother is there as it relates to healing of families healing of marriages the blessed mother is there interceding for us and we also have to stand on the fact that God wants to heal our family wants to save our family we look at Acts 16 31 believe in the Lord Jesus and you and your household will be saved they spoke the word of the Lord to everyone in, in his house and he and his family was baptized at once and this is the jailer where he wanted to kill himself because Paul had been released supernaturally. And Paul went to his house and said, believe and you will be saved. And, and that belief, that belief of consecration of the family, of belief in God's power and healing power is Believing. so important. Yeah, we have to believe sometimes even when we, it doesn't look like it's possible. It doesn't even look like it could happen. And and that verse, what is it again, Steve? 1631 Acts. Acts 1631 is so important. Believe in you and your household will be saved. I say to so many people, you know, you're, you may not think that your household will be saved by what you're looking at right now, but you believe and you keep praying and you keep sharing and it will happen. Maybe not immediately. 
but believe and trust it will happen. God wants to heal your family, and he's given us a mother. And this mother is our blessed mother. And the blessed mother will intercede for your spouse, intercede for your kids, your grandkids, but pray the rosary. And also stand on the fact that God is the God of, of, of healing, the God of, of saving, of redemption. Second Peter 3, 9, the Lord is patient with you, not wishing that any shall perish, but all shall come to repentance. And it's so important, again, to understand that we can consecrate our family to the Lord. We can consecrate them and believe in the fact that God wants to heal them. God wants to restore them. Another really critical part of, of this whole process of restoration is understanding that we have to use words as blessings. Matthew 13, 37, by your words you'll be acquitted and by your words you'll be condemned. Say positive things about your family, about other people, to other people about your family. Do not condemn your family by anything that you say. Make those words be words of faith. You can say things like, well, my son, my daughter used to have a problem with anger, but the Lord is healing it. So whatever you do, use words to bless your family. As in, in Genesis, may God give you the dew of the heavens. As the, as the Father did for Jesus, Luke 3, 22, you are my blessed Son in whom I am well pleased. You know, one of the things I like to do, Steve, is, is I see a weakness or something like a, a child is very stubborn, let's say. I can take that and say, okay, that's a gift that God's given them. It just isn't quite developed yet. And so rather than saying, oh, my child's so stubborn, I stop and I say, thank you, God, for you are going to give my child the gift of perseverance or the strong attitude that this child will be able to use this gift in their in their life to get them through difficult times. So I think we need to look at those gifts that we, we're proclaiming them to be a positive now rather than a negative. Well, and the other really important thing is to understand that God honors the words out of our mouth. Again, those words are something that are powerful. And when we say, I have a son, I have a daughter who's holy, who's blessed, I have a daughter who's been healed. I have a son that is blessed among men. You know, you say blessings on your family. You tell other people blessings. And yes, they're not perfect, but God is blessing them and healing them. And you are supporting that in faith and trusting God. Blessings are really important in scripture throughout. They always sought the Father's blessing. And we need we have the opportunity to say little blessings over our children and our family members every day before they walk out the door you can say a blessing silently if you have to but it's so it's such a powerful gift and bless them with the sign of the cross point number seven is be obedient in all things and blessings will follow we see that in deuteronomy 28 that when we can keep the commandments of the lord blessings in terms of children livestock and soil as it says in the scriptures but it, that could be translated to financial jobs and so forth that God will give us incredible blessings when we follow him when we're blessed by him we don't know what those blessings look like but all they know all I do know is no one can outdo the generosities of the Lord when we're obedient we can look at Jeremiah 29 11 to 14 for I know well the plans I have for you says the Lord, plans for your welfare, not for woe. Plans to give you a future full of hope. When you call me, when you pray to me, I will listen to you. When you look for me, you will find me. And you, when you seek me with your heart, you will find me and I will change your lot. God is a God of restoration. God is a God of healing. He wants to restore your family, your marriage, your friends. He wants to restore your relationships. Jeremiah 30 18 to 22, I will restore the tents of Jacob. The city will be rebuilt on the hill, the palace restored as it was. From them will resound songs of praise, the laughter of happy men. His sons will be as old, you, may, you will be my people and I will be your God. 
God is restoring. The seven steps again. Surrender your heart to Jesus. The second step, forgive God and forgive others. Third, forgive yourself. Fourth, leave your Isaac at the altar of God and seek God first in all things. Fifth, let the Blessed Mother intercede for you. Sixth, bless your family, your friends, your relationships with the words that you say, words of blessings. Seven, be obedient. Yes, it's always a journey. It's always a journey. But in that journey, I've seen incredible things in our family in which our family has returned to the church, the sacraments, um, have been blessed in terms of their activities. Obedience does lead to blessings. Obedience leads to greater faith. And I will tell you unequivocally, we are so blessed to have a ministry, the SOAR ministry, that is a ministry of restoration, of healing. Join us this Friday evening, May 30th, for a weekly gathering at St. Francis of Rome Catholic Church, 501 East Foothill Boulevard in the city of Azusa from 7.30 to 9.30. And we have a very important speaker who will be there. And that's me. <laughs> so come and see me. Um, I will be praying for blessings and we'll be praying for miracles. It will be absolutely fantastic. So please come because it's going to be all of God and none of me is my prayer that I will be used to pray for healings and miracles and blessings and restoration. We'd like to pray with you at the Sower Prayer Line, 877-71-GLORY, 877-714-5679. If you want to learn more about the Sower Ministry, please visit the website at JesusTheSower.com. That's JesusTheSower.com. This radio program is a collaboration between Spirit-Filled Hearts, the ministry that we founded, and the Sower. Please visit us also at SpiritFilledHearts.org. That's SpiritFilledHearts with an S dot org. Like us on Facebook.com backslash Spirit Filled Hearts, follow us at Spirit Hearts 1. That's Spirit Hearts 1. The next prayer meeting is June 14th at St. Elizabeth Ann Seton that we'll be leading from 7 to 9 p.m. That's 9 Hillgate in the city of Irvine. Many of the SOAR um, ministry have been attending and many miracles are happening. I'm so blessed to be part of the SOAR part of this ministry, this restoration ministry. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for healing us. We thank you and praise you for healing our marriages. We thank you and praising, praise you for healing our family, our children, our grandchildren. We thank you and praise you for healing ourselves mentally, emotionally, and physically. We thank you for healing our friends, for those that have hurt us, Lord God, for healing of memories. We thank you and praise you, Lord God, for all the gifts and blessings that you've given us, Lord God. We praise you for be, being that God of restoration. And I bless all of you out there through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the intercession of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, the intercession of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I, breath, I bless you and pray for healing of families, of relationships, of physical healings, mental and emotional, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. And we will be back with you next week. This has been your program, Empowered by the Spirit. We invite you to tune in every Tuesday from 8 to 9 p.m. here on Asne Catholic Radio.
nos llama a compartir la alegría de la buena nueva, llevando la esperanza a todos los rincones del mundo. Para unirte como un misionero.